we had a great show this past Saturday, UFC on Fox, and uh, a main great event show was a good. terrible rating. Yeah, I was about to say, great show, bad ratings. Yeah, apparently nobody cared about that Nate Diaz and Jim Miller match except you, me, and DDP. <laughs> Man, our picks weren't very good. Uh, for those keeping track on the scoreboard, myself and Stevie J went 2-2. Two and two. Kev brought up the rear. He went 1-3. and three. In fact, Kev's only correct pick was a pick no one else picked, and that was uh, the man with the worst tattoo in MMA getting a victory. Yeah, that was actually the most impressive fight of the night as far as I was concerned because Al Belcher went in there and traded leg lock for leg lock with Husamar Palhares, and I thought he was ducking butts. I'm like, what are you doing? This man's going to destroy you. And not only did he not destroy Alan Belcher, he got finished by Alan Belcher. So he, he literally stuck his head in the lion's mouth and came out looking clean and shiny new. So way to go, Alan, the talent, Belcher. You proved you are the talent. Well, Belcher wants a title shot after that, and I'm like, slow down, Romeo. You ain't getting a title shot just yet. Yeah, you beat Husamar Palhares, but that does not automatically grant you a title shot. It moves you closer to a title shot. In fact, I'd say you probably sprung over a few guys on the ladder with with that one victory, but you're not all the way to the top of the mountain just yet. And for those who haven't uh, seen the tattoo, listen to last week's episode of Glove Up or Shut Up, where myself, Stevie, and Kev give our thoughts on the Johnny Cash Tattoo of Doom. Oh, hell, just start typing Alan Belcher in your Google bar, and it will automatically complete Alan Belcher Bad Tattoo before you're done typing. <laughs> well, let's start with the main card, Stevie, with LeVar Johnson beating up Pat Barry. Although Barry took the fight to the ground early, uh, Johnson went back on the feet and won the fight with some wicked uppercuts. Yeah, the funny part was that Barry was finished without ever actually falling down. He was just pinned up against the fence, and any time he was about to fall down, Johnson would hit him so hard it would knock him back up. So eventually the referee was like, you've taken about 34 shots in a row here without really doing much to defend yourself except putting one hand up around your head, and those blows are still racking you, so you're done. It, the, the ref made a merciful save here. Yeah, that was... Uh... Oof, some of those uppercuts, I mean, he was blocking a few, but there was three or four that just, uh, you could see Barry was out in his feet for sure. Yeah, that's why I say, for, for putting his hands up, they weren't really doing much to help him, because Johnson's a big dude and has some big hands, and he was putting a big hurting on him, so that was the right call, because Barry was just, he was a zombie at that point. He was standing there taking a beating, and he wasn't dead, but he wasn't really alive either, so it was better to stop it there before it got any worse. Now, the third fight on the main card, Josh Koscheck and Johnny Hendricks. Hendricks won by a split decision. And I always say, never leave it to the judges. And I don't understand, Koscheck, when they announced Hendrick was the winner, you walked away in disgust. It's like, dude, if you want to win the fight, win the fight in the 15 minutes. Don't rely on the judges. You want to win, freaking win. Especially when Koscheck is known for being a guy who goes to decisions and fights. This shouldn't really come as a surprise to him. Yeah, I mean, Semtex is on line one for that. Exactly my point. So if if you're bothered by losing a split decision, then you didn't do enough or you didn't try hard enough to finish. So no sympathy as far as I'm concerned because I picked Hendricks in that fight. So I'm totally satisfied with the outcome. Well, let's talk now the main event, Jim Miller and Nate Diaz. Diaz, uh, that was pretty much those- destroyed oh. him. Well, the first round was Diaz's, but Miller had a couple good shots. A couple, but let's face it, Diaz won the first round. Oh, yeah. But the second round, for those who didn't see it, during the round, Miller's mouthpiece fell out, and that's when Diaz applied the one-armed guillotine choke and took his back, got the, the second arm into position, and... As he was wrenching the arm back, choking Jim Miller, you could see Miller sticking out his tongue and biting down on it because his mouthpiece wasn't there, and he was tapping out real fast. Yeah, he almost bit his damn tongue off. It was kind of disgusting. His his tongue was swollen and purple, and he was going out cold, and there was nothing he could do. And Diaz, of course, the gangster that he is, as soon as he went, uh, let go of the hold, went right to the camera, flexed his non-Bugs Bunny muscles, and just screamed into the camera, What? What? Well, you know what? I hope he does that every time he wins a fight from this point on. And I don't care what you call his non-existent muscles because they tap you out in a heartbeat, too. Well, one thing uh, you'll never call... That wasn't even my favorite part, though. 
You're, you're forgetting thing, the best part of the whole on, hold thing. Hold on, hold on. The one thing I'll never call Nate Diaz is a juice monkey. That's for damn sure. Well, maybe, but the other thing you'll never call him is uncharismatic because he oh. started cutting a promo for the ages with Joe Rogan, and he's thanking everybody that he loves and thanking his brother and thanking all his teammates, and Joe Rogan tries to wrap up the interview and pull the mic away, and he says, I'm not done yet, and then <laughs> proceeds to thank five or ten more people. I'm like, I thought you go, to thank us yeah. at one point. That that was beautiful. That that was a star making moment. Was Nate yeah. Diaz going? I'm not done yet. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, Diaz does get a title shot. He gets the winner of Benson Henderson's rematch with Frankie Edgar, and that will happen very soon. And uh, Anthony Pettis, he just keeps getting shat on every way. Oh, poor guy. That, Actually, I can't catch a break. He should fucking go to Bellator. Maybe he'd have better luck at a tournament. We'll talk about Bellator in a minute. Don't get me. Don't jump ahead of the script here, Stevie. But, I'm just uh, saying, it, it, as much shit as Anthony Pettis gets with not getting title shots, he, he might as well go somewhere else for a while and actually see if speak, he gets some respect. Speaking of Anthony Pettis, my first news item of the week does involve his brother Sergio. Have you heard what about him? I heard he's something, 18 but years I, old. Sergio, no, hold on, let me, let me read it off here. Sergio Pettis, 18, thinks he can move into the UFC, could be just a, uh, he's basically saying he's a few fights away from going to the UFC. He's 18 years old. Well, that's not necessarily unprecedented. I mean, how old is Rory McDonald? 21, 22. And when he started, he was like 19 or 20? Yeah, but I mean, I, the fighters are just getting younger and younger. I mean, has anyone in their teens ever fought in UFC? Uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Rory McDonald was probably the closest to it. Yeah, but I don't chat room if you're if uh, you know the answer, if there is an answer, just blurt it out. But uh overall, Stevie, uh the, the, the show was really good and um too bad nobody saw it. Yeah, uh, here's one of the rare cases where maybe more people saw the Fuel TV fights than actually saw the show on Fox. I, I think it was really hurt by the mayweather Cotto fight being on the same time and that being like 2 million buys on pay-per-view. I think it totally overshadowed UFC on Fox, which is a damn shame, but what can you do? Now, uh, Dana White is teasing a January mega fight at either Cowboy Stadium in Dallas or Rogers Center in Toronto. Do you think he's talking GSP? He'd almost have to be if it's going to be at the Rogers Center. Now, that would be obviously GSP. Hmm, how would you word this? GSP and Carlos Condit in a unification match? Probably going to have to be at this point. And uh, speaking of unification matches, they're going to have to do one for Dominic Cruz and Uriah Faber at some uh, point. Oh, yeah. Because that's what they're going to announce tomorrow night on The Ultimate Fighter Live. They're going to, well, I just revealed uh, that we're uh, <laughs> taping this on a Thursday. Yeah, spoiler. But anyway, they on The Ultimate Fighter Live tomorrow, they're going to announce that he gets an interim title shot either against Henan Barrow or uh, who was the other guy that they had listed as potential Michael McDonald. Candidate? Yeah, Michael McDonald. One of those two guys will be fighting Uriah for the interim title. And I'm going to just say right now, I think Uriah wins that fight and has a unification uh, fight with Dominic Cruz. If it's Barrow, maybe not. I don't know. Barrow and Faber could be a, a war. And well, Barrow might out. have the speed advantage on him, but I think Uriah could get in one of those famous team alpha male guillotine chokes and choke him out. Perhaps, perhaps. Every time I've ever counted um, out Faber in a fight before, he's won. So I'm not going to make that mistake again. 